Talk with Mitch Lafon. We are speaking with uh, Guns N' Roses drummer Frank Ferrer, of course. Uh, he is out promoting the uh, band PSSR, better known as a pisser. Uh, new singles, Busted, Push, and a whole lot more. As we say in Montreal, uh, bonjour, Frank. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me on, Mitch. I'm good, yeah. thank God. Nice and safe out here in the desert in California. Doing okay. Yeah, we're sort of the we're sort of safe out here in in nowhere land, Canada. But you know, <laughs> the the virus doesn't want to come up to the snow. Well, okay. safe is the operative word there. Safe is wherever you are, as long as you're safe and sound. Yes. yes. So so let's talk about about this PSSR pisser. Uh, you know, sure. obviously obviously mainstream media gets a little bit uh, quirky with the name, but. Uh, of course. You've done a bunch of stuff in the past. Talk to me about putting out new music, signing with Golden Robot Records, and what exactly sort of is, is PSSR trying to do or P Pisser trying to do? Is it sure. just sort of, yeah, let's we'll start with that. Well, yeah, well, I'll give you just a little background. So um, I was in a band that was signed to um, Epic 550, um, which um, with Richard Fortas and Eric Jacobson, who's the lead singer of Pisser. Um, this was like in the late 90s, and we did a record. Uh, the band was called Honky Toast, and the band got dropped, like, you know, regular band story. Did a record, got dropped. Um, so Pisser um, rises out of the ashes of Honky Toast. Um, so Eric started, the lead singer Eric, started that band early 2000s. Um, I've been in and out of the band, obviously, you know, working with different bands with Guns N' Roses. Richard Fortas has also been in and out of the band. You know, he's super busy, high in demand, killer guitar player. Um, so, um, but, but Eric has kept the band going, going, and going. And every time I would go back to New York after a tour or whatever, we do a bunch of pisser shows and stuff. So we finally decided to record some stuff. Um, we recorded like pretty much a full length record um fast forward to to last couple of years um mark at golden robes the, the owner of, of golden robot um heard it heard the depth the, the record because the record's been in the can a couple of years um and loved it and wanted to put it up and that's how we're, we're at right now um but pisser is a band that's actually ha has been around for a long time we've been around for a minute yeah, but for for many many years. In fact, uh, before you joined Guns N' Roses, we we had spoken about Pisser and of course your yeah. time in Psychedelic first. Uh, let me just quickly right. ask you about that working with Richard Fortas because you know when you go join a band like Guns N' Roses, and you see all the new kids in the town, it can be intimidating. But you go there with a friend, with a guy that you oh, played with. Uh, yeah. How important was Richard? For, for you, for Richard, and Richard, for you to both sort of join this band together and have your backs, in a sense? Um, uh, that's a really good question. Um, that's a, like, that's a good, we could have a whole conversation on just this one question. I, I'm but good I'm with to, that. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm make it as, as, as brief as possible. Um, Richard joins in 2002, um, Guns N' Roses. I didn't join until 2006. But yeah, because Richard and I had this musical relationship for, at that point, would have been like 15 years or something, you know? Uh, or t maybe like like 10, 10, 12 years at that point, uh, we have this musical relationship. So yeah, it was very comfortable for him when uh, when Brain uh, um, needed to step aside, so so he could he could his wife was gonna have a baby, so Brain wanted to spend time with his wife, obviously. Um, and so it's, and I had played with Tommy Stinson also through Richard Fortas. You know, I met Tommy through St uh, through, through Richard Fortas. So between Stinson and Fortas. Um, to them, what I understand was like very natural just to give me a call because uh, they, yeah, because we were friends and, and we also had a good musical relationship. We've worked together, we've played together, which is very important. And you were band. also friends with Bumblefoot, I, I believe, at the time. I became I mean, friends with Bumblefoot afterwards, right. Afterwards, okay. Bumblefoot and I became but, good friends. But he yeah, lived yeah. in the same neighborhood or something. Like you, you were not too far apart. We weren't too far apart. We weren't in the same neighborhood. He was about 40 minutes south of me because uh, uh, okay. eventually, um, uh, fast forward a few years, um, I, I, I have a couple of kids. Uh, we bought a house in New Jersey, so I moved from New York City to New Jersey. Um, but I didn't meet Bumbles until I joined Guns. But yeah, but we came, became friends right away because we were basically neighbors. But we were like 40 minutes apart from each other. So, so, so talk to me about, about that and, and working with Richard, because obviously there's, there's talk of, of a new album and there's all this. What's it like having that connection with him in terms of musicality, though? 
Well, um, the connection would be like, uh, I need to see if I can describe this as, as easy as possible. When, whenever, whenever I need, I, whenever musically um, on stage or we're working in the studio, when I have a fallback to, Rich is always my fallback. I, could, I, know, I know that my back is covered. I lean back and Rich is there. Um, again, we have, we're, we're, we're friends, but musically we have a really strong, strong relationship. So it's really um, easy to work with him. We have, we, we're, we're on the same wavelength, you know, um, as far as uh, um, um, groove and, and riffing and tempo. Uh, we're, we're cut out of the same cloth, you know. So, so it's, it's easy. I mean, it's, the only, it's, it's easy to have someone like that in the room, you know. Yeah, um, obviously, I've become closer to the other members of the band, too. But, yeah, it's, easy, it's good to have, like, your go-to guy, the guy to fall back on, of course. Yeah, and, and such an incredible talent. But let's get back to, uh, to Piss here. So, so the album's sure. been done for a couple of years. Right. Obviously, I guess the Not In This Lifetime tour is one of the reasons why you hold on to it, because you can't go promote it, because you're busy. Right, well, and the... the, the the, uh, the goal was to be able to do Pisser in between, um, you know, tour dates. Um, so, you know, that was like the I'm gonna send up how, oh, this is how we're going to try to get this together, you know, because um, the, the other guys in Pisser, um, um, Richard, oh, I'm sorry, Richard, uh, Robert Bailey, the guitar player, um, he's also a working musician. Um, um, so he's, he keeps busy also. He's mainly, mainly a session guy, does a lot of Broadway, off-Broadway stuff, New York guy. Um, and Eric keeps busy too. So everybody knows that, hey, you know, Frank could be gone six, eight weeks, you know, we'll hunker down, stay, and then, and then the goal was to like, okay, he's gonna be home for, for a month, let's go out and do some dates. That's, that was the goal of this whole thing. Obviously everything has changed, but that's also Mark from Golden Robot, the, the CEO, he, he had that idea also. It's like, oh, maybe this is something that we could squeeze in between, between uh, tour, um, tours that, that right. I'm on. No. And, and of course, when you go on the on the night, not on this lifetime tour in 2016, everybody thought, well, you know, give it 10 months or give it a year and then it'll be over and blah, blah, blah. There'll be all this free time. And here we are four years later and right. you just announced 2021 dates. And it's like, OK, well, yeah. <laughs> well so yeah, much for all these other projects. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I, I, and also, I, I mean, and, and, you know, along those lines, um, um, you know, obviously, GNR Guns N' Roses is the biggest biggest band in the world, biggest thing that I've ever done. So proud to be part of it. Happy, content, every word you want to use. Um, but but Piss is, is, a, is near dear to my heart. You know, I mean, Eric, I love Eric. I mean, he's, he's my brother. Love him, love him. I love Rob Bailey. These guys are my friends first and foremost, you know. So it's, 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 that's a big part of Pisser, you know. It's, 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 dear, it's in my heart. Now that this album is going to come out, and, and we know it's been around for two years, is it sort of the culmination? You go, okay, it's out, it's over, and now we focus on other stuff? Or do you say to yourself, okay, now we got to find time to play shows when we're allowed shows. Now right. we got to find time to write the next new album. Right. I mean, is it sort of the, a stepping stone, or is it the end of the path? Um, it's not definitely not a stepping stone because this is this is something that has longevity. This is this is uh, um, um, this is going to go on for. I mean, this is probably going to be one of those bands, whether we record or not, it's something that we're going to get together and do. Pisser is constant. It definitely doesn't have a beginning or an end. Um, it's just always going to be there. So if we have success, awesome. If we put out more records, awesome. If we get to tour, awesome but we just love doing pisser. We do it because we love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we want to keep going. <laughs> we want to keep making records. I mean, we have, I mean, I mean, you talk about a band that has a 15 year history. I mean, no one's ever heard of us, but you know, we've been together for 15 years. So there's, I mean, we have a lot of, there's a lot of songs we could do. We could probably do two more records, you know, now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of songs, tons the, of songs. The vault you know? is full. Um, yeah. Let me ask yeah. you quickly about the importance of showmanship, because we all know that back when you were 11 years old, you go see Kiss for the first time. I saw Kiss at 11, except mine was in 79. Yours was in, I guess, 77. Right. What do you so that means? Uh, so that means you're 35 years old. <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah, I, I've seen because I'm only 33. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, wait, you're you're 35. I'm 33. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Right. That's what. That's See, what I meant. I just, like, 
You, you got, <laughs> yeah, I got the rock star age going on here. Um, <laughs> but how important is it for you when you're playing big stadium shows with Guns N' Roses to have that sort of showmanship part of it? Because it's easy just to go up there and stare at your Tom Toms and play away, but you've got to you've got to be demonstrative. Um, well, I mean, I mean, um, um, well, yeah, Guns N' Roses is just the closest I ever be in wearing makeup and high heels and stuff right. that for sure. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, I mean, come on, man, Kiss is like they invented the shit, dude. I mean, we, can, you know, I mean, you can you can hate them, you can hate on the members, you can hate whatever you want to hate on Kiss. The reason why you like to go see a rock show or whatever show, I mean, Britney Spears, um, Beyonce, it's pyro and it's Kiss, it's Kiss. Yeah, oh yeah, you, you know, need, costumes, yeah. costumes, that's all Kiss, you know. Listen, um, even, even, even Slash is a costume. I mean, that top hat, Slash goes out with his ponytail in, a, in an elastic band, it ain't gonna look right, you need. Well, you I, need I mean, I mean he's definitely, I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't call him a, a costume, obviously, but it's definitely an iconic look, for sure. It's a look. Definitely a it's a look. iconic. Um, in terms of drumming, and, and we did an episode yeah. for one of my shows in the past where we talked all about Creatures of the Night and the yeah. Eric Carr drum sound. We, I, I think we spent yeah. 45 minutes talking about that, <laughs> which, hey, you know, why not? Uh, but, but talk <laughs> to me a little bit about drumming, because you, you go see this show, you know, it, Peter Chris is obviously an early influence. Who are all sure. some of the other influences and... and you know, when Kiss changes drummers, do, does it feel like the end for you, or how did you? No, no, it doesn't feel like the end for me. Um, uh, well, okay, obviously, you know, my first Kiss record was Kiss Alive. It's the first Kiss record I ever heard. You know, um, that I owned. Um, my parents bought me, I should say. Um, and the drumming on that record, um, whether it's recorded in the studio or live, who cares? It's pretty slamming and it's pretty rocking. So. Um, and it's got I've swing. Always, swing. I, I've always wanted to be, you know, um, a groove drummer, a good swing right. groove drummer, you know. So that was like, Peter was a huge influence on, uh, on my playing for sure. Plus, you know, my father was a Latin percussionist, so the a lot of Latin music in my home. So that's the first really rock drumming that I really wrapped my head around, you know. And obviously later on, you know, you then all of a sudden John Bottom is like the greatest drummer, rock drummer ever. You got you know, Phil Rudd of ACDC, Groove to the Max. You have Charlie Watts, you know, Groove to the Max. And then growing up in New York City, I got to see some incredible drummers that were like, you know, neighbors, basically. You know, guys that, you know, that I bump into at the bodega, you know, you know, uh, um, Sterling Campbell comes to mind, Zach Af Alford, you know, um, it, it, you know, Steve Jordan, you know, incredible, groove rock drummers and they're like your mates so i was able to like have the rock star drummer that i listened to on records and then i also had my guys that i would go actually go see play at the china club or at the cat club so i was i was super lucky growing up with with, with different drumming influences super super lucky i got and to see everyone in new york oh i can imagine and yeah. did you do that Studio stuff too? Did, did you go see like the Alan Schwartzberg and the Anton Figs and all the, did you have access to the studios? And, I, I, I didn't, not, guys? No. not really. I, I, I've met Anton a bunch of times. So he's living in New York, obviously yeah. doing the Dave Letterman show. I've met him yeah. a, a bunch of times. Um, Great drummer. But, but, but no, I, I didn't get to see them in the studio. No, I didn't really get that, that, that chance. So let me ask you this, because you are a sort of a swing drummer or in, in fact are a swing drummer. When you're playing the GNR stuff, does it make it easier to play the Adler stuff because he's more swing and Sorm is more sort of meat and potatoes and, and straight ahead pounder? I don't think, I don't think either one is easy. I, want to, I definitely want to use the word easy. Um, um, they, they both, and you have to include the, the Chinese democracy drumming too, because um, it's all three drumming, Brain, brain Slash, Josh Freeze, you know. Um, and yourself. Oh, and myself, but, I, but we're talking about like how to right. meld it all together, right? So, so I, try, I try to keep the spirit of the song the same, definitely um, find a niche between the, the, the three different drummers, and at the same time filter that out to be like my own thing. So um, that's the most, it, I don't think it's easy at all, but um, that's what I try to do. Um, 
hopefully I'm accomplishing that. I mean, the guys in the band are helping with my, happy with my drumming, but um, I'm um, that's what I try drumming. to do. Oh, sweet. Thank you. I've seen, uh, God, how many shows have I seen with you? Probably seven, eight. Uh, no compliance from me. Uh, in terms of, of Chinese democracy, that album to me is incredibly misunderstood. I think the song Chinese democracy itself is as good as anything the band has ever done. You, of course, played on it, so you may be attached a little more, but do you think as the years go by, people are surely coming around to it going, ah, okay, you know, was it judged too, too critically, too harshly? Um, I think that it is definitely coming around now that, that Duff and Slash are playing the material. I think that has given uh, people a uh, signature sound. A signature sound and a new perspective <laughs> on the album, you know. Um, that album rocks. Um, I'm, I, I'm not sure how to answer that, but I think definitely people are giving it a second look now that, um, you know, Slash and Duff are actually playing the material like better and Chinese democracy and this I love we were playing for a while and, you know, um, a lot of really cool shit on, on that record. And, uh, and those guys, you know, uh, you know, opening of their arms and embracing that stuff. I mean, I, I think that was also part of the healing process. To, I, th I think, I think um, um, them doing that and then, then, and Axel doing Slither, I think we, I think everybody, uh, especially those three gentlemen are really trying really hard to really come together and be as one. And I think it's super impressive and, and I'm really, glad to be part of it and I'm supportive of it. So, so yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, to go back to your original question, I think that Chinese democracy is getting a second look. From the yeah, and, and, and I have to say, I'm very supportive of, of it too. When I saw that the video the first time of the band doing Slither, wherever, Belgium or wherever it was, I was floored. I thought, wow, how cool is that, that they're bringing all these musical things together and yeah. there's no more ego, it's beautiful. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Psychedelic Furs have a new album. You were, of course, in the band for a while. Right. Talk to me about the different drumming styles that you, that you need to employ because Pisser is different than Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses obviously different than Psychedelic Furs. How do you sort of mold and adapt in terms of sound? That's another great question. Damn, Mitch, you're going, you're going big. Uh, I'm good. I'm you know, I haven't played with the Furs in a while, um, but you know, I was in, again with Richard Fortis and Love Spit Love with, with Richard know. Butler of the Psychedelic Furs and Tim and Tim Butler of the Psychedelic Furs. Um, and yeah, that drumming was completely different um, than the stuff that I'm I'm used to doing. Grew up playing. I was more of a right. punk rock groove drummer. So so um um. Um, and oh, and they, they to... use, you know, through the 80s and, and stuff, they used the Simmon drums and the Lynn drums and they had that right. sound. Right. So to come right. and try to play it live, it's like, ooh, good yeah. luck. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, totally. Actually, they were very, those guys were really happy and supportive also of me doing all that stuff acoustically on the, on the drums too, you know, um, like Heaven and all those kind of songs. Um, but, uh, but it was, yes, yeah, a different head. I mean, it's more of an artsy kind of like, like the drumming in that is more uh, melodic. The drumming in that is more melodic. Um, so, so it's it's a different it's a different approach. But again, I was in a band called The Beautiful. That's how I met Richard Fortas because we, right. we played the very first band that you were signed to. Yeah, and that and that drumming was more artistic, melodic, um, and and that lended in that 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 definitely was great to get me into Love Spit Love because again, that was also more of that kind of drumming. Um, but I mean, overall, I'm definitely in my wheelhouse here with, 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 guns, with Pisser and Guns N' Roses. It's my wheelhouse. I just wanna, I wanna put a deep, the deepest pocket and foundation I could put on the music and let everybody else just flourish. You know? Yeah, and, and by the way, I, I hope you get to put more of your stamp on GNR stuff. We all are hoping for, for new material, but let me just ask you this, in terms of career, you know, you, you had Beautiful, it, it, it didn't go very long. Then you joined sure. Psychedelic Furs, then you do uh, compulsions and then GNR. Right. You know, you, you, you're sort of a gun for hire. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'd, I'd love no, no, to no. be you because it's a great place to be. Right. Uh, at some point, do you want to put more of a stamp on your own band, say, run off with Richard and Eric and just say, all right, we're going to go do a thing and that's going to be our gig. And, you know. I never think I, about I, it, Mitch. Yeah. I love my life. I, I want to change a thing. How, how can you not? I, mean, yeah. that's, that's, I, I, want to I want to change your thing. 
I, I mean, and, and I'm saying that from, from the deepest part of me, I wouldn't change a thing. I love my life. Yeah, absolutely. Do we have any updates on, on, on new music for, for anything else? Or is that the big, the, the $10,000 question? Or in fact, that is the $10,000 question. A million dollar question. In this but I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I, and I, I want to answer this like this. We're in a, we're in a, in a pandemic. I mean, I mean, the, the, the new music and new this and new that, and let's get to the, that's all great, man. Stay home and wear a mask so we could get over this thing. That's, that's, that's the only thing I could say to, to anybody. If you want to hear new sh music, if you want to see, go see your bands, want to go wear a mask, stay home, stay home, keep yourself safe, keep your neighbor safe, and, and we'll get through this. And, 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 then, and then we're going to be back to normal and the world is going to be much more brighter. Let's hope. And, and, but it's going to get tougher, though, as the fall rolls around and a lot of folks have to send their kids back to school. I mean, it's, it's sort of hard to keep everybody home, but you sort of have to. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see when yeah. we get there. Right. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I totally understand that. Um, um, again, um, school is important. I mean, keeping us alive <laughs> is primordial. Is, is the number more important than anything. So. Right. Uh, and I, and we'll finish on this because I know you're running out of time. Uh, G yes, and I sir. put out that box set, the uh, Appetite for Destruction thing with Shadow of Your Love and a few others. Uh, there was talk that some of those songs were uh, given a fresh coat of paint in the studio. W were you at all involved in brightening up some of that material? Um, I don't know how to answer that exactly. What I would was say it, is that, that yes. I would just let, yeah, right. I, what I would say is <laughs> I, I would let, that's a, that's a better question for management. Let's put it that way. All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, of course, yeah. uh, Pisser, the new album coming out. The album's out in December, I believe. Yes, I, I believe so. I, I'm not sure of the date, but I mean, but the, but the single's out now. It came out on, the, on July 19th, I believe. Three uh, singles uh, are out, I think, currently. Yeah, yeah, um, but last time. The, late, the latest one right. is last time. Yeah, yeah. And when was the last I'm, time you had a good time? The last time we had a good time. And, and the album is called what? Is it Busted? Or is that just a song title? Um, I think we're just going to call it right now. It's just going at this point. It's going to be PSSR Pisser. Oh, I have a great title called Mitch. You just Mitch. It's beautiful. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know oh, what? That's what we'll call it. Why not? I, I, that that seems to work. Anyway, always a pleasure. I'm glad we've done Thank this. Thank you. Uh, and, and we had that long chat about Eric Carr. So we'll do another. We'll do an all kiss yeah. episode at some point. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, absolutely. That'd be fun. Yeah. If you guys said, if you have like multi. Kiss fans on, you definitely give me a call. I'm down. Absolutely. And uh, just uh, from the bottom of my heart, I love what you guys do. I love the uh, the new incarnation. I think Melissa's great. I think Richard's great. I think you're great. And the shows I've seen have been nothing but spectacular. So keep it up. And as we say, thank you, Montreal, Mitch. Merci for that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye bye. All right. Perfect.